We're in the world of procurement, from RFPs to evaluating vendors to managing contracts, all the way to ensuring vendors are following our agreement. We do this with a multimodal LM, powering a seamless workflow, ensuring we get the best deals, hold our vendors accountable to the terms we agreed upon, ultimately saving us time and money. Let's dive right in. All right, if I'm in the procurement department, part of my job is helping select new vendors based on a certain set of requirements for my organization. So normally I help put together an RFP or a request for a proposal. These are based on requirements for running different services or materials across my business. And so what we're looking for is elicit response from vendors about how they might serve us. So if we look here, the RFP in this one is I'm looking for facilities management in New England starting in June of 2024. There's a bunch of different things that I may help with that I'm outlining to these potential vendors. And then also the scoring that I'm going to be looking at uh, for them as a vendor for my business. So this is great, but it's all very unstructured, right? It, it's stuck in PDFs and Word docs, but it doesn't have to be that way. This is our RFP parsing review app. So you can see here, I've actually got the RFP, the PDF here version, and we've used AIP to actually extract and manipulate and understand what's going on in the document. So we've created a summary, an objective. It's also extracted the entities around timeline and milestones, requirements, even put categories and requirement types in here and what page on the PDF it's referencing. So ultimately I'm taking unstructured and I'm creating the structure. But you can see I also have the ability to edit. I can add a new milestone in for when the contract decision is going to be made. Or I can edit the summary to add a couple extra notes of clarity. This is how we have human in the loop AI. This is pretty cool. But how do we get here? Let's go take a look. All right. This is AIP logic. This is our LM backed functions that we're going to use to help us extract different components of these PDFs. So you can see here, I have a system prompt that I'm about being a procurement specialist uh, that can help summarize RFPs. Uh, I give it the document text, and it's going to give me a nice, concise, and self-sufficient summary as the output text. I'm going to use GPT-4 model during this one, but it's as easy as changing um, the different model types here or even the temperature associated. So this one's going to get output the summary. The next one's going to be the objective. And then in the last logic block, I'm going to put all those together, and I'm going to give it access to a tool called the edit RFP summary and objective. So this tool will allow this LLM to actually update the ontology object with the summary and objective, right? So that, that's pretty slick. Now I've also got a debugger that will help me walk through all the different steps. So I should have an example here. So this is gonna show me what's happening in this logic block. Here's the chain of thought reasoning. Similarly, here's the next one around objective. In the last one, it'll show actually the output of what, how I actually use the tool to update the ontology. Very cool to be able to iterate through and work with LLMs in this way. All right, so there's a couple different AIP logic functions. There's one for parsing the RFP milestones, very similar kind of concept. Uh, and then there's another one for RFP activity. So you can see how we're extracting all the different things. This is how we can use software to make sense of this messy world. All right, so that's cool that AIP logic can add all this structure to it, but, but why do I care? Well, the next steps, the goal of the RFP is to get vendor responses. So let's say we've got some responses back from the vendors. So we've got Aztec supplies. They gave me a PDF. You can see they've got their own structure to the PDF and the response. Um, and then this vendor Delta Steel has their own version too. So I can use AIP logic just like I did in the first step to add the structure to those documents. But now I want to bounce those up against the RFP to understand which vendor should I choose based on their responses. So you can see a high level summary of these two but I also have the detailed different RFP requirements and the different response and explanation and summaries of them. So I can click through and dive into the details of each one, what, what might be important around landscaping or expertise of the steel manufacturing operations, right? There's all these different pieces that I'm interested in. Now I can dive into each one of those. I can see the summary, but this is also cool. I can have an LM make a recommendation with the chain of thought reasoning and why, why I should choose um, Delta Steel in this example about they've got, got a good price point, they've got 15 years experience. So the whole goal here is now me having this workflow of human and AI working together. Now I can more effectively make sense of a bunch of responses against a bunch of different RFPs across my business, helping me accelerate the time to value. Because the ultimate goal is to find a vendor and then set up a contract. So we've picked a vendor, put a contract in place, and this is our framework agreement 360. So you can see, I can see overall view of them. 
I can also search across these contracts, trying to find the right contracts that are associated for what I'm looking for. And again, this is uses our kind of different rag terminology on the back end to intelligently search across the corpus of contracts. So here is a PDF. Uh, this is an example. This has got 28 page uh, PDF um, that is for this contract. We're going to use the same AIP logic type functions to extract all the important information. Uh, and then also summarize it, also linking back each of these key facts to where they are in the document. So very cool that I can cross-reference that in one view here. I can see kind of the key points of this contract. And then if I need to dig into them, I can go look at page six for this and figure out what else I need. All right. And then you can see down here, we've got things like key terms. So these are the different key terms in the document and the description of what they actually mean and what kind of different type of key term they are. And then also common terms or common questions. So what is the minimum order quantity? Okay, well, there's nothing calling out termination notice, right? So this is helping me evaluate these contracts. Um, and then if we could click over here to this other contract, you can see also I did all that same stuff, but I also have fixed price items. So this is where in the PDF I'm calling out um, and actually linking to the ontology, a material from that vendor is this material in my business and my ontology. And here's the price that we're going to sell it for, or what we're going to buy it for from them. Again, this builds that cross reference out automatically from an unstructured document here. So you can actually see, I've got this sitting in a PDF in a unique format. Pretty cool. Then the last part is I also can do like discount. So each parts of these um, can be very flexible. So you can have different categories of things in your contracts and you ontologize that linking it into your business. Now these contracts are part of your ontology, a part of your business language. Very neat. All right. So a lot of times you'll get questions about um, different terms of a contract and how they might relate to a, a business owner that owns that contract. So in this example, what does uh, the vendor not have exclusive rights over? If we hit this run here, it's actually going to go do the search for me. And it's going to give me back an answer. So quickly able to answer questions on these documents, also linking that back to the truth of the PDF. Very, very cool. So now I have contracts. How do I enforce these contracts with my vendors to make sure they're following the terms? So I've got contracts in place. That's awesome. Now, as I do business with these different vendors, I want to make sure that we're staying compliant. How do I look for violations? Because normally I would have incoming purchase orders and contracts are in PDF and I'm having to manually check things. Maybe I only catch the really egregious things. Well, we can use this structure we added in prior steps along with being able to search the ontology for these purchase orders as they come in and automatically find match up and look for violations. So how does that work? If we actually click on one here, this is an alert for a contract violation. I had uh, a contract states the minimum order quantity is 100, but in this purchase order, there's only 59 order. And so that was the term that was listed out in the framework agreement. We actually got the framework agreement right here for this one. So minimum order quantity is 100. Again, this was from the contract that we had processed prior. Now, if we come back over here, so that's violating the terms. You can see the related party, I'll you cast, and we can actually look at their vendor and kind of understand all the info about them. Again, because sometimes there's human calls about strategically how I want to do this, or maybe a conversation I need to go half with AliCast. Maybe they don't realize that they're violating the terms and we need to refresh their memory. But you can see all the info at your fingertips here. Also, again, the violating purchase order itself. It's only for $158 uh, for this different sheet metal. Maybe I need to change the contract terms. Maybe we need to refresh their memory. But again, all the information in my fingertips right here. But you can see uh, Alucast has 23 different violations. So that's quite a few right here alone. So there's probably a broader conversation needs to be had. So I can cl click through and you can see how we can analyze each one of these. But how does that actually work? So we've got another tool called Automate. So Automate is an event-driven engine that allows us when things happen in the ontology that happen in your business, they trigger events and processing and other things. So in this case, when a purchase order comes in, we want it to automatically then trigger an AIP workflow to do the matching and violation detection. So that looks like in this use case here, I've got a purchase order coming in, and now I want to run this AIP logic function to detect and create those alerts. So pretty cool in here. It's really easy to configure. I'm actually just hit, ed hit edit here and we'll take a look. So you can see the object set that's coming in. We're going to say for each purchase order that comes in, I want you to actually process this. And it's going to call an AIP logic function to go do that. So now that AIP automate is running for every purchase order coming in, looking for these violations across my contracts, that's great. 
Now, the scale of these might be hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of contracts, and even more purchase orders, so it's massive. So with AIP Automate, AIP Logic here, I can decode these things, alerting me to the most important things I should be working on in my business. This is awesome. This is how AIP turns you from a problem observer to a problem solver. All right, that's the content for today. So now that I have AIP coming to these highly manual, disjointed processes, bringing structure and automation while keeping visibility into what's happening, humans in the loop. So now we can deal with inevitable messiness of this real world. I'm able to quickly derive value from the data, whether it's structured or unstructured, set up alerts, take actions. Pretty cool. If you want to try it out for yourself, shoot me a DM. Let's go build together.